Hello. Good, good evening, evening, teacher. Good evening. How are you? Fine. And you? Fine, too. Good. So, um, a, que a question. Okay, uh, okay. Eh, como acaban de decretar lo que es asueto el día viernes, ¿cómo, cómo va a estar eso? Eh, en este momento nos dijeron de que vamos a esperar a que nos den las indicaciones de si se va a tener las sesiones el día viernes. Si anuncian cualquier cosa, nosotros les vamos a estar avisando en el grupo. Ok. Uh -huh. Ok, Mr. Pancho. Está bueno. Ok. <risa> Okay, we are going to start with the session number three. In this case, we are going to have um, a change in topic. We are going to change the topics that we were developing yesterday and on Monday because we already end that part of the topics. So we are going to change that. Ya vimos lo que eran las respuestas con el so to neither and either. And now we are going to change from that topic to another one that is the use of will and would and in that case we are going to begin the session with a video in which we are going to hear and read a conversation in which um, they are putting into practice the use of will and would Para comenzar, para entrar en detalles, en calor, como se dice, vamos a comenzar con una conversación en donde están utilizando el will y el wouldn't. And we are going to listen and read the information that they have in that conversation. And the conversation is called ordering a meal. They are ordering a meal on a restaurant, maybe. So we are going to begin with that part. We are going to have like a discussion of the details of the conversation, but we are going to begin with that part. So let me share the screen and the audio. Okay, let's... Hello everyone, I want you to pay attention to the following conversation. We will now listen to the model verbs would and will. As always, try to practice the conversation with a friend. Listen and practice. May I take your order? Yes, I'd like the lamb kebabs. All right. And would you like a salad? Yes, I'll have a mixed green salad. Okay. What kind of dressing would you like? We have blue cheese and vinaigrette. Blue cheese, please. And would you like anything to drink? Yes, I'd like a large iced tea, please. Qué rápido habla ese individuo. Yes, they talk very fast. Nos encontramos con ese tipo de conversaciones a menudo when we are learning English, in this case. Teacher, su, su audio tiene poco volumen. Okay. Porque la, la, el video lo estábamos escuchando, yo lo estaba escuchando bastante alto y su, su voz se oye bien allá. Ok, let me... Su micrófono tiene poco volumen. Yes, let me change that because um, it is supposed that it is with the whole volume, but let me let me check that. Welcome, Aleli. Hi, guys. Good evening. Good evening. Tell me, because it is supposed that it is like with the whole volume. Se escucha más fuerte ahora. Lo mismo, teacher. Lo mismo se escucha. Pero se supone que está todo el volumen, está a tope el volumen del 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 micrófono. I don't know why. Sí, sí eso es lo que me parece raro. Eso es lo que me parece raro porque el video que pasó estaba sonando. Excelente, o sea, se escuchaba bien fuerte, y, pero su voz se oye allá al fondo. Yes, and it is that, se supone que está todo el volumen a tope y no sé por qué se escucha bajo. 
Mm. Sí, se oye bien baja, bien baja la voz. O sea, sí se le escucha, pero, uh -huh. pero se, oye, se oye poco. Yes, I, I don't know. I will take this one because I don't know if I can help the sound. Voy a tratar de tener siempre el micrófono de los audífonos más cerca para ver si se escucha más fuerte. Porque sí tiene todo el volumen en el sistema y no sé por qué se escucha tan suave. So, in that conversation, we have some details about the topic that we are going to see right now. And we were saying a conversation between uh, two people in this case, and I'm going to share again the, just the conversation, not the sound, just the conversation because we are going to see some details. Let's see. Here we have the conversation in which they are, well, in this case, he is ordering a meal. Está ordenando una comida en este caso. So in this case, we can say that they are in a restaurant. We have the waiter and we have the customer. Tenemos al, eh, al que va a servirle, verdad? Y tenemos al que está comprando. So in this case, we uh, begin the conversation saying, may I take your order? ¿Puedo tomar tu orden? Yes, I, in that case, I like the lamb kebabs. Sí, me gustaría. In that case is, I would like the lamb kebabs. And in that case is, son brochetas. The kebabs son las brochetas. All right, and would you like a salad? Wool, the word wool in this case is the one that we are going to use and study in this session. And would you like a salad? Te gustaría o le gustaría una ensalada? Yes, I will. I'll, I will have a mixed green salad. Okay, what kind of dressing would you like? What kind of dressing would you like? We have blue cheese and vinaigrette. Blue cheese, please. And would you like anything to drink? Would you like anything to drink? Yes, I like a large iced tea. Something that we can notice in this kind of conversation is when we don't have like um, the security or we don't know the person uh, to which we are talking, uh, we are going to use wool because in that case is a formal way to talk with that person or is a polite way to talk with that people. Tenemos el uso de will y will, pero en este caso el will va a ser para eh, sonar más formales y cuando no conocemos a la persona. En este caso vemos mucho el uso del will de parte del waiter o del mesero, porque obviamente está atendiendo a la persona que obviamente les va a dejar propina, dinero o algo por el estilo. Y obviamente tienen que tratarlos con respeto porque es parte del de trabajo. So in that case, they are using wood. But we can use wheel when we are like having uh, another kind of conversation with friends or something like that. So we are going to begin with the information that we have about wheel and wool. We are going to see some examples and also we are going to have like more information about the uses of wheel. ¿Cómo podemos utilizar el wheel? We already know that in this case, will is in future. And we are going to talk about future actions or things that are going to happen in the future. But also we are going to see what are the other uses that we can have for the will and wood. Vamos a ver cuáles son los usos que le vamos a dar a will, a wood, que no simplemente es hablar eh, del futuro en positivo y en negativo, sino, o oh, de una manera más eh, formal, sino que también vamos a ver para qué más podemos utilizar el will. It eh, has a lot of um, uses, not just one. So we are going to begin with the information and also with the examples and uses of 
will. So we are to begin, we are going to begin with that information. Let me take this one. So in this case, they are model verbs. And we are going to use it for request. That is the main thing. Teacher, excuse me. Who is uh oh okay? Topic. Tell me. Model verbs would and will for request. Vamos a utilizar el modal verb would and el modal verb will para hacer peticiones o cosas así, pero también vamos a ver para qué más los utilizamos. And we are going to divide it into, um, into parts. One is will and the other one is will. So, we are going to have all the information about will, and then we are going to have all the information about will. So the first part is will. So the first thing is using will to make request. It says that uh, will is the auxiliary verb for the future simple tense, but can also be used when requesting someone to do something. It is important to bear in mind that will is a more casual way of making the request than using the conditional. Así que ahí tenemos que es obviamente para hablar del futuro, pero que lo utilizamos para pedir algunas cosas y que también es más informal. And we have some examples for this uh, information that we have of the use of will. Let's see. In the examples we have, would you close the door, please? please? So. Is there much? Se le corta la, el audio. 
teacher no se le dio nada. Okay, I will. Uh, no listen, nothing. Teacher, please, it, please. Hello. Hello, teacher. No se le escuchó nada. No se le escuchó nada, teacher. Okay, I will uh, take the, the camera off for a moment. Voy a apagar un momento la cámara para ver si, si funciona. And if it is not working, I'm going to change again the connection of the internet because uh, I am using my cell phone right now. So let's see. So we have the examples. Tenemos los ejemplos. Will you close the door, please? Puede cerrar la puerta, por favor, o podría cerrar la puerta, por favor. Then we have, would you help me cook dinner, please? Will you help me cook dinner, please? Okay, in this case, you can uh, notice that we are using questions. Estamos utilizando preguntas porque estamos pidiendo algo. And in this case, um, it is not like we are going to use just sentences because in that case, it's not like are requesting. But when you have this kind of question, you are requesting for help in this case. Would you close the door, please? Or will you help me cook dinner, please? Me podrías ayudar o me ayudarías a hacer algo. En ese caso, yo estoy pidiendo. Yo estoy diciéndole a alguien que necesito ayuda. En cambio, si yo utilizo la oración de you will help me cook dinner, no le estoy dando una opción. Le estoy ordenando. Me vas a ayudar a hacer la cena. Y punto. But in this case, that is not the point of the requesting. Porque no estaríamos eh, pidiéndole un favor o pidiendo ayuda, sino que estaríamos ordenando. Y eso ya sería otro tema. So in this case, we are going to use the question form eh, to ask for something or requesting something. Then we have, will he do his homework before we go out, please? And it says that we can also be used in a similar fashion to can when requesting someone to do something. Quiere decir que podemos eh, compararlo con el uso de can, de poder, eh, cuando lo hacemos para pedir algo. So, simplemente cambiamos eh, el, la palabra verdad, y el tiempo Pero podemos decir que es muy similar a can. Can you please? Can you help me? Can you give me? Can you? In that case, it is similar to can, but in future. So in that case, we are going to use will. But let me change a little bit. And we are going to talk about the other um, uses of will. Vamos a hablar de los otros usos que también tiene will. No simplemente para requesting something. Okay, here we are. It says that um, we use will to express beliefs about the present or future, to talk about what people want to do or are willing to do, or to make promises, offers, and requests. Tenemos otros tres usos, que el último es el que estábamos viendo en este momento, 
El primero es para expresar creencias acerca del presente o el futuro. El segundo, to talk about what people want to do or are willing to do, es lo que las personas quieren hacer o eh, tienen la posibilidad de hacer. Y el último, to make promises, offers and requests, es para hacer promesas, para ofrecer y para pedir. Let's see if this is going to work. Because I don't know. So, we have here, we use will. And we have the three uses. to express beliefs to talk about what people want to do. To make promises, offers, and requests. And we are going to divide this information into different parts. We have the number one, beliefs. Vamos a hablar de lo que creemos. We are not going to talk about like we believe in God and all the things. We are going to talk about situations. So in this case, beliefs. We use will to express beliefs about the present or the future. That is the first one that we have in the document. ¿Qué creemos nosotros que va a pasar? En el presente o en el futuro. Algo que queremos que pase. Y estamos seguros de que puede llegar a pasar. And we have some examples for this one. It says, John will be in his office. John will be in his office. John is in his office. Yes, and this one is present. No nos referimos a que estamos utilizando el tiempo presente, sino que estamos hablando de algo que eh, probablemente esté pasando y que no estemos completamente seguros. En este caso, John, ay, no. como, John puede estar en la oficina. Uh -huh, exactamente. Right. I know, I know that John is working. That is the thing that I know. And I believe that John is in his office. I don't know if he is or he is not. No lo sé. Yo no sé si John sí está o no está en su oficina. Puede que haya salido, puede que no. En ese caso, yo creo que está en su oficina. Then, we have the second one. We will be late. We will be late. And in this case, it's future. Vamos a llegar tarde o llegaremos tarde. And we believe that we are going to be late because something happened. And we have another one that is in future. We will have to take the train. Vamos a tener que tomar el tren. ¿Por qué? Porque estamos tarde, ¿verdad? So, this is future. Then we have another one that is the number two. That in this case is related to the things that we can do. Because in the second one, we are talking about uh, the things that we can do or willing to do. 
And it is willingness. Esta es la disposición para hacer las cosas. Eh, we can do it, we can not do it. Estamos dispuestos o estamos disponibles para hacerlo. And we are going to use will to talk about what people want to do or are willing to do. And in this case, we have examples. We will see you tomorrow. In this case, we are not going to see you tomorrow. We are going to see you on Friday, maybe. And the next one, next one, perhaps that will lend me the car. Perhaps that will lend me the car. En este caso, la disponibilidad o la voluntad, en la primera, nos veremos mañana. Es cuando obviamente sabemos que sí lo vamos a hacer. En el caso de que no, no utilizaríamos este tipo de frases. But in this case, we are sure that we are going to see each other tomorrow. And the next one, perhaps that will lend me the car. Tal vez, quizás, mi papá me preste el carro. In that case, it is maybe on the, um, the way my dad is like, if maybe is happy or is feeling good, it will maybe lend me the car. But it's depending on the mood. Then it says that to talk about typical behavior, things that we often do because we are willing to do them. En este caso del willingness, también lo vamos a utilizar para hablar de eh, comportamientos típicos. Comportamientos típicos o cosas que hacemos um, a menudo. Porque tenemos la voluntad de hacerlo. Tell me, Aleli. Dice, pero en sí, la palabra willingness no la vamos a encontrar en la oración. No, eso no la van a encontrar en la oración, sino que se refiere a la voluntad que ustedes tienen de hacer las cosas. No que Entonces, van... solo aparecería will. Ajá, es que will es la base. Acompañado de un complemento. Exactamente. Will es el que me dice. Básicamente, ustedes van a encontrar willingness en la disposición, en el contexto de su frase. Por ejemplo, mi disposición y la disposición de ustedes en el we will see you tomorrow es, ¿ustedes tienen tiempo para presentarse a la sesión? Sí o no. O yo tengo tiempo de presentarme a mi trabajo, por ejemplo, o estoy enfermo, no estoy dispuesta, no tengo la voluntad. Entonces, en ese contexto es donde ustedes van a encontrar el willingness, no en la palabra en sí. La palabra no la vamos a utilizar, vamos a utilizar will para hacer sí. algo. Tell me. Este, bueno, no sé va, si yo me estoy equivocando, pero eh, yo creo, yo, bueno, yo no es que quiera, sino que he visto eh, en dadas ocasiones, no sé si es correcto, este, he visto en dadas ocasiones donde dice, por ejemplo, I am willing to help you, o sea, yo estoy dispuesto a ayudarte, pero sin el NES, solo willing. Ajá, es que la palabra willingness, ahí es donde aparece. Ustedes tienen esta otra, willing, y tienen willingness. Pero willingness es como el sentido general, porque les aparece, si ustedes lo traducen, les aparece como voluntad, o les aparece como disposición o disponibilidad. Si ustedes le quitan el ness y dejan willing, es dispuesto. I I am willing to uh, buy the vegetables. Estoy dispuesto a comprar las verduras. O sea, también estamos hablando de la disposición. Porque el will es la voluntad. Es, o sea, el will, solo la palabra will es voluntad. Pero cuando lo hacemos en ING, acuérdense que es cuando nosotros agregamos el yendo, ando en español. 
En este caso, yo estoy dispuesto, I will, o yo tengo la voluntad, I will do something. Yo voy a hacer algo. En el caso del ING, I am willing, estoy haciendo. Yendo, ando. Eh, en ese caso, sí lo podemos utilizar para oraciones sin el NES, porque ahí es general, es la voluntad en general. Pero en este caso, no vamos a utilizar el willing, o sea, nuestra, eh, nuestro verbo o nuestro complemento o nuestro auxiliar no es willing, no es want to do, es will, es cómo utilizamos el will en estas situaciones. Acuérdense que el will nos habla del futuro, acciones que nosotros vamos a realizar en el futuro y que en muchos de los casos no sabemos si se va a lograr. En ese caso, si nosotros estamos 100% seguros de que algo se va a lograr, we are going to use going to. Pero en el caso del willing, es cuando usted está dispuesto. No tiene Excelente. nada que ver con el futuro. Tell me. Quisiera aprovechar este momento porque también tengo una duda. Tell me. Este, en este caso, así como will representa la voluntad como palabra adjetiva, también este, hay, otro, hay otra palabra que representa una, lo puede, no sé, pero puede transformar un verbo a futuro, que es el, quería saber la diferencia, es el shall. Ah, shall. Es, acuérdense que nosotros tenemos eh, los, los, I mean, en este caso, aquí tenemos lo que son, y aquí lo dicen en, en, el, en el tema, los modal verbs. Esos modal verbs a nosotros nos, nos ayuda a eh, cambiar, a, eh, ¿cómo lo podemos decir? Eh, a transformar un verbo en este caso porque nos está dando algo más. En este caso, nosotros tenemos diferentes eh, modal verbs o tenemos diferentes auxiliares. En este caso, el shall, que... No siempre lo vamos a ver nosotros en, 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 en temas así porque son bastante eh, profundos. Pero, ¿cómo utilizamos nosotros en este caso? Because you are asking eh, the use of shall. Dice que básicamente el uso del shall es un poco peculiar porque es un verbo modal, es un modal verb que eh, se parece al uso del will que en este caso es el que estamos utilizando en este momento, pero que no, eh, no se intercambia en muchos de los casos. Y primero, el significado es una sugerencia, no es eh, la disponibilidad, es como una sugerencia. E, y no es válido en todas las formas personales, o sea, no es válido para todos los pronombres. Y en muchos de los casos solo se utiliza con I, Solo es válido con I, con yo, con el mi, con la primera persona. I shall. El sí. shall se utiliza más que todo con la primera persona, no con los otros pronombres. Por ejemplo, shall I open the door? Es como abro la puerta. No es la voluntad que yo tengo de abrir la puerta, sino estoy dando como una sugerencia de que puedo yo abrir la puerta o debería yo de abrir la puerta. Um, en el otro, shall we dance, que es una frase que ya hemos escuchado mucho. Shall we dance, es bailamos. Es como eh, le preguntamos a la otra persona si quiere, ¿verdad? Le sugerimos, le damos como una opción. Bailamos, puede, no es como, will you dance with me? Podrías bailar conmigo, sino que en este caso le sugerimos, bailamos. Y... Mm, lo podemos comparar con, más que todo con el can, pero no con el will, porque will sí lo utilizamos para todos los pronombres, pero el shall solo lo vamos a utilizar con el I. Y eh, en este caso, el shall siempre acompaña a otro verbo en infinitivo, solo que ese infinitivo no va a llevar el to, el to que lleva siempre al principio de los infinitivos. Eh, no cambia, se mantiene igual, no le vamos a agregar ninguna S, e, S ni nada por el estilo. Eh, funciona igual para interrogativas y positivas. Y 
no acompaña a otros modales, es solito, es único. Y, gracias, teacher, gracias. Mm -hmm, you're welcome. So, en este caso, no lo vas a utilizar con todos los pronombres. So, we are going to continue with this part we, because we were talking about um, where I'm going, like this, here, willingness. So, in that case, it is the things that we can do or we are willing to do. Then we have the number three, el numero tres, promises, offers, and requests. That is the part that we were saying at the beginning. Vamos a hablar de las promesas, ofrecer algo, o sea, hacer ofrecimientos, y pedir. So in that case, we have promises, offers, and requests. And it says that we use I will or we will to make promises and offers. Para hacer promesas y para ofrecer vamos a utilizar I will o we will. Si quiero hacer una promesa siempre tengo que utilizar I will. O we will cuando somos un grupo. For examples, I mean, capital letter, okay. We have the example, I will give you a lift home after the party. I will give you a lift home after the party. Te voy a llevar a tu casa después de la fiesta. It's like a promise. I will give you a lift home after the party. And the next one, we will come and see you next week. We will come and see you next week. Vamos a venir y te veremos la próxima semana. And in this case, we are going to take like a little information about the wool because in that case, we are going to use it like question, like the thing that I was saying at the beginning to make requests. In that case, you need to make questions. In that case, you are not going to use positive statements. Para los requests, siempre van a ser preguntas. No podemos eh, tener las oraciones eh, positivas, sino que siempre van a ser preguntas. We use, will you, or will you to make request? And we have the examples. Would you carry this for me, please? Will you carry this for me, please? And the second one, would you please be quiet? So in that case, we have the promises, offers, and requests. And we know that for uh, promises and offers, we are going to use I'll or I will and you will. 
and for for requests we are going to use questions let's see we are going to have like um like a short exercise in which we're going to put into practice the use of will and and will. In this case, we are not talking about will right now, but we are going to have a short exercise. Tell me, Aleli. Uh, teacher, excuse me. Y para negar, se podría también ocupar will. Yes, in that case, you can use want. Want, o sea, want. Es, sería como una contracción. Sí, es will not o la contracción want. Yes. Want. Mm -hmm. Ok. Okay, we are going to see. Let me have the exercise here. Because we are going to see the exercise, the short exercise. Let me see, number one. Okay, we are going to have ten sentences, solo diez oraciones, y solamente vamos a poner cuál es el la palabra que podemos utilizar, ya sea will o ya sea will en este caso. Solo es? sentences, le escuchamos, teacher. Wait, wait, give me, give me a second. <laughs> Because it is for the use of the connection in the in the cell phone. Give me a moment. Es por lo mismo del, del uso del de la conexión que se corta. Yo creo que dijo que tené, vamos a hacer 10 ejercicios y que nos vamos a, a ocupar el will y el will. Mm -hmm. Es lo que entendí. Yes, that is, that is correct. Thanks, thanks much. <laughs> but let me take this one. Because I cannot use the, the, the cell phone because <laughs> it is going to, to take the connection out. With and would. Yo solo dije y se marchó. Ya su barco le llamó. Libertad. Okay, we have ten. I'm going to write the ten sentences, and you are going to tell me which is better because in this case, um, they have like. Almost the same usage. Tienen casi el mismo uso. Y se marchó. Again. I mean, I don't know why. Será que porque no quieren hacer los ejercicios. Por eso me fui. Okay. Let's see the exercise right now. Cargosando, verdad, Santi. <laughs> risa, 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 risa y no dice nada pregúntele Santiago, pregúntele ok Santi ok she's gone uh, ok your exercise, ok are you not have the question? Uh, are that clear? <laughs> Very okay. nice, very nice to Eso te hace falta, verdad, Lely? Okay. 
Okay, something that we need to be very clear in this case is like, um, we can use will because it is the past form of will. So in this case, we can use it for situations in the past, but also we can use it when we are trying to sound more formal in a polite. So in this case, it is like very easy to um, see what are the answers for this exercise because in this case, we are going to have like a specific words that are related to the day or the time. And you are not going to use the, the correct words in that case. And also it is easy because we are going to talk about a specific situations. So we are going to have just 10 and you are going to tell me which are the best option. So we have the number three. Do you like a coffee? Okay, in that case, we have 10 simple sentences. They are not very complicated. And we know that in some of these sentences, we are going to use will and would. So we are just going to, re uh, to read the sentence first, and then we are going to decide what is the best option. In the number one, it rained this evening. It rained this evening. Number two, it is no yesterday. It is no yesterday. Do you like a coffee? Do you like a coffee? I go to the cinema tomorrow. I go to the cinema tomorrow. He probably arrive soon. He probably arrive soon. We play if we had a ball. We play if we hot a ball. Some said he come. Some said he come. I do it if I had time. I do it if I had time. They paint it as you want. They paint it as you want. If I were you, I go there. If I were if I were you, I go there. So let's think about uh, the uh, answer that we can that we can uh, have uh, for these exercises. I will give you like a minute, one minute. 
to think about the, the answers. And we are going to write the correct answers in the exercises. Okay, let's see. For the first one, it rained this evening. Estamos hablando de futuro. Esta tarde, algo que no ha pasado. ¿Cuál vamos a utilizar en esta número uno? Will. Will. Will, yeah. Will it rain this evening? ¿Va a llover esta tarde? Maybe yes, maybe not. We don't know. Then, it is snow yesterday. Hablamos de algo que pasó ayer. Nevo ayer, what we are going to use? Well, wood. What is snow yesterday? Nevo ayer. This one es una pregunta bastante formal que le puede hacer un mesero a alguien. ¿Qué vamos a utilizar en ese tipo de preguntas? Well, 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 well you like a well, coffee. Well, 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 well. Yes. Would you like coffee? Would you like Ay, a coffee? Me equivoqué. Don't worry. That is part Don't of the worry. process. No se preocupen. Would well, you like coffee? En ese caso, cuando... No, no is perfect. Exactly. And we are learning. So that is something that, that is going to happen. Then, in that case, is because it's someone that is asking for a service. Estamos eh, dando como una sugerencia o estamos preguntando sobre algo que otra persona quiere. So, en ese caso vamos a utilizar would. Sí podemos utilizar mm -hmm. will, pero es más informal. Then, number four. En este caso podemos hacerlo negativo. I go to the cinema tomorrow. ¿Cómo lo hacemos negativo? ¿Cómo lo decimos negativo? I want, want, want. I want. I want. I want to go to the cinema tomorrow. No voy a ir al cine mañana. Es lo que le preguntaba, ¿verdad? Si mm -hmm. se podía poner will en negativo. Exactamente. No, es I eso want. mismo. En este caso, want es la parte corta, pero también podemos decir will not. Will para not. Para referirnos a los negativos. Right. Then, number five. He probably arrive soon. Yeah. Will. 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 He will probably will arrive probably. soon. Probablemente probably. llegue pronto en el futuro. Then, number six. We play if we had a ball. Had is in past. Good. We would play if we had a ball. Hubiéramos jugado si hubiéramos tenido si hubiéramos tenido la pelota. Pero como no la tuvimos, no jugamos. Then we have number seven. Sam said he come. Sam said he. In this case, it is past, but how can we make that a uh, answer in negative in past would no would. seria will will not uh -huh. would not or would. we can say wouldn't wouldn't would oh. not right. or it's a, it's a contraction the will not it's the contraction Yeah. Dice que es más corta, pero solo le quita una palabra y es igual de larga. But in this case, it's the contraction of would not. Words. Then we have in the number eight, 
I do it if I had time. I will do. Mm. Would. No, I would. I would. I would. I would. Oh. I, I would do. because we have something in past. Tenemos ya el ya y hasta yo me <risa> Estábamos probando, a decir, estábamos probando, a ver si están poniendo atención. <risa> Para ver si estaban atentos. Exacto. <risa> right. That's perfect. Good. Liar. Oh, <risa> Oh my God. <laughs> Number nine. They paint nice. it as you want. They paint it as you want. Mm. Will. They will. Good. They will. Well, yeah. Ellos lo van a pintar como tú lo quieres. And in the right. last one. If I were you, I go there. In this case, past negative. The won't. Won't. Wooden. Wooden. You go there. Right. Si hubiera sido tú, no hubiera ido allí. <laughs> Pero como no fui tú, sí fui. <laughs> so, in that case, no we fue, have... No fue mi mismo. <laughs> <laughs> So in this case, Where we have these kind of sentences. En este caso solo tenemos oraciones bastante eh, cortas y un poco sencillas para hacer el uso del will in would. But in this case, we were just talking about will, but we have some information and we are going to end with the information of will, but we are going to explain something about will. Then in that case, we are going to use this auxiliary in conditional, but may also be used when we may request in English. Unlike will, using would is a much more polite. Aquí viene, es mucho más eh, serio, ¿verdad? Mucho más respetuoso el uso del would. And in this case, it's like the word that we are going to use to request something with someone. And we can say, in the case of, will you close the door? We are going to say, would you close the door, please? Would you close the door, please? Would you help me cook dinner, please? Will he do his homework before we go out, please? In that case, it's not like we are just going to use that would for people that we don't know. Maybe we have that kind of relationship with the person that we are in that moment. Maybe someone um, older, or we have that kind of a way to speak. No simplemente en este caso, en este contexto. Nos quiere dejar, teacher. Nos es, quiere... es la hora, ya dice, ya casi, ya casi. But necesitamos llegar al final. En este caso, no simplemente se trata de que yo conozca o no a la persona, sino si yo también tengo esa relación de seriedad y la forma de hablar con esa persona es así como más seria, yo voy a utilizar el will. Pero si yo tengo una forma de hablar más relajada, I will say will in this kind of request. But the question is, what is the best one to use? ¿Cuál es el mejor para utilizar? And it says that you can obviously use will and would at your description. Also, it is much more recommendable to use. What? Mm -hmm. No listen, no listen. Okay, give me a no second. Listen, I not don't. In the chair. Okay. I don't. Wait, 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 wait. Apago la cámara ya para lo último y vemos si me escuchan bien. ¿Me escuchan ahora? Yes, no. Sí se escucha, pero por rato como que se quiere ir. Como que quiere marcharse. Es que dice, mañana no tenemos sesión, <ríe> vámonos ya. Pero ya vamos, ya, ya nos vamos, ya nos vamos. Teacher. Tell me. Ah, y el, y el viernes, teacher. 
Vamos a ver. Eso le pregunté yo, pero dice que le están... Está Vamos a ver, ahí. lo están considerando. Ah, ok. Uh -huh. Es que si no nos va a tocar dos viernes seguidos, las otras dos semanas, me imagino. Teacher, yo no entiendo por qué no dan clase mañana, si ninguno de nosotros va a ir a marchar. Um, Aparte básicamente... de eso, se marcha en, la, en el día, no en la noche. <risa> pues claro, hay que aprovechar el tiempo. Sí. Sí, pero básicamente no se hace porque como es por lo de la, del mismo día de la independencia y por el respeto, ¿verdad? Protocolo. Es que se, ah, por los protocolos. Mayor respeto que trabajando. I know, but you know that in some cases we cannot like change that. No puedes. Aleluya, no, Guatemala. Ok, ya para terminar. No, nada que ver. Por el money. <risa> <risa> todo, todo sea por el yuyo ok teacher dice. bien, para finalizar ¿qué vamos okay. a utilizar nosotros o cuál es mejor? pues sabemos que podemos utilizar ambos y es dependiendo de el gusto de cada uno ustedes pueden utilizar el will si se sienten cómodos o el would si se sienten cómodos pero aquí no es que uno es más correcto que el otro y que uno es mejor que el otro Aquí ustedes el más usan. Ejecutivo, el Exactamente. Eso lo van a All hacer right. cuando ustedes eh, vayan a una cosa más seria. But you can use both of them. And now it's time to end the session. And we are going to see each other on Friday, I guess. I don't know. I'm not sure. But it is possible. So, maybe. Maybe. So have a really good night. And. Good night. Good night, teacher. Bye, teacher. Bye. 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 Bye.